Hi, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to have a chat about the early days of breastfeeding. So when a woman gives birth, um, the milk that she's producing is called colostrum. So this early milk is often referred to as liquid gold. It is really beneficial for baby for building up their immune system and their gut health for, for up to the first three years of life. In one millimeter of colostrum, there's between one and five million white blood cells. Over the first three to five days, that colostrum changes gradually to a more mature milk. Depending on the type of birth, it can take a little bit longer. So if there was um, certain birth interventions, maybe an epidural uh, or a cesarean, anything that really affects the birth hormones, it can delay that change in the milk up to about five days. Straight after birth, baby, are, baby is usually quite alert for the first hour to two hours. And this is a lovely time to help with the bonding and also to initiate breastfeeding. After that, baby can be quite tired. So they're usually very tired from labour, the same as the woman. And for the next 24 hours or so, baby will be quite sleepy and quite tired. And as much as possible, if the woman can sleep at the same time as baby is sleeping, that'll be really beneficial because after that initial 24 hours, baby will at some stage wake up. And when they wake up properly, they'll realize that they're hungry and they've never experienced hunger. They can also be quite overwhelmed by all the new sights and smells and sounds and a little bit um, confused by it all. So sometimes they can be quite upset and um, maybe a little bit fussy But knowing this can really change that. So knowing to expect it and knowing that the reason baby is a little bit upset is because they've come out of their perfect environment and they, they are just getting used to being on the outside of the womb. And things that we can do to help at this time is to keep baby on the mom's chest, skin to skin. And um, so as much as possible, have baby skin to skin with mom, maybe a little nappy on. This can really provide baby with lots of comfort because being skin to skin can help regulate baby's temperature, regulate their breathing and their heart rate and their blood sugars. Um, it can also increase the oxytocin levels for mom, which can help with breastfeeding. Um, and also the proximity to the breast can be really helpful in the amount of breast feeds baby has. So if they're right there, then anytime that they stir, move a little, and they can have easy access to the breast. Babies show us signs that they are hungry through their feeding cues. So as you can see, the early cues are quite simple, so just a little bit more movement than they had had, um, hand up to their mouth, some rooting, which is when maybe you stroke baby's face that they, they turn towards that, and um, things like that are the early cues. And then more movement, and um, looking a little bit maybe agitated, maybe yawning, things like that can be the mid-level cues. And then towards, as, as baby gets hungrier, then they might start to cry. So crying is a late cue for hunger and we want to try and get baby onto the breast before they reach that stage because if baby is crying what that means is we're going to have to try and calm baby down so that they can get onto the breast and this could take maybe five minutes and in that time baby is using up a lot of energy and calories crying and what's going to happen then is they might fall asleep then quite quickly once they do calm down and start to feed so they might not get a full feed 
and also they're using the calories that really should go into to feeding and to growing them. Um, so the earlier we can get baby on to the breast will allow for a calmer feed, a more efficient feed. And also in the early days, mom and baby are learning how to breastfeed. It is something that is instinctual, but also there's a bit of a learning curve. And as babies grow, they get more control over their, their head and their neck, and they're able to feed in the positions that we, maybe we're more familiar seeing when we see with breastfeeding women out in coffee shops and restaurants. Um, but in the early days, babies don't have all that control. So what we can do is use the, the starter positions. So just to give you an idea, you can see I'm laid back here. So I'm quite comfortable. And this is what you want to see, what you want to feel. You want that all of mom's muscles are supported. So at the moment I've got baby skin to skin, and um, you'll imagine skin to skin on my chest and um, baby's fully supported. And when baby starts to demonstrate some of those early breastfeeding cues, then what we want to do is we want to allow baby to find their way to the breast and we might help them a little bit just maneuver them to a position that we know is comfortable it's important that baby's whole body is in touch contact with our body and what that does is it triggers special points on baby that um, helps them to open their mouth really wide to get a good latch onto the breast. So we want baby to take in a lot of the breast because it is breastfeeding, it's not nipple feeding. So we want them to take in a good mouthful of breast. So to do that, we want their tops, the tops of their feet and their knees, their hips, their chest and their chin all to be in touch contact with our bodies. So depending on our body type, um, we might like this where it's, it's laid back and baby is lying in full contact straight down our front. We might find that in order for our body to feel fully supported, we might like a pillow under our, our elbow. And baby should, if we take hands away, baby shouldn't move. Baby should be fully supported. Gravity should be holding baby onto our chest. So you might prefer to have baby Again, in full touch contact, full touch contact across the body, but maybe more straight across rather than straight down. And in this position, baby's legs, you can see here, baby's legs aren't, baby's feet aren't in contact with anything. And so they have a little trigger point on the base of their feet as well. So we do want that to be in touch contact with something soft. So if it's something hard, babies will push against it. But if it's something soft, it'll just help to trigger that reflex. Some moms might want to just move their body a little bit more so they're more reclined and comfortable. What you want is that you can be in the sitting position for quite a while, you know, but you could be feeding on and off for an hour or two, and that you're fully supported and baby is fully supported by your body. And so it's really normal for babies to feed frequently. So small frequent feeds are what helps to build up your supply. It's normal for babies to be feeding anytime, anywhere between eight and 
14, 15 times, if not more, in a 24 hour period. But often those times are clustered together. Um, so you might have maybe three hours, often in the evening where baby will feed um, kind of non-stop. Um, you might find that you're switching from one side to the other. Um, and that's really normal. That's baby helping you to bring in more milk for the next day. They'll usually have one longer stretch during the day where they will sleep for a little bit longer. It's not always at night that we might prefer. Um, it is often in, during the daytime. And if possible, particularly for first time moms that don't have other little toddlers running around to look after other kids, uh, if you can sleep while baby has a sleep, it really gives you a boost and it gives you more energy then for the time where they are cluster feeding or if they're waking quite regularly at night. Over the first few days, we'll expect to see baby having lots of wet and dirty nappies. On day one, um, baby's poos are quite black and thick and tar-like in substance, and this is called marconium. This, as the milk changes, and um, the poos also change. So gradually the poos go from black to green and then to yellow on day three or day four. And by day four, we'd like to see um, at least four of these uh, yellowy liquidy poos that are normal for a breastfed baby. So some women do find when the milk starts to flow and um, they get quite a strong letdown and they can really feel that it might feel quite um, tingly um, but once that passes and once baby starts actively feeding and then in between feeds there shouldn't be any pain and if there is or if you notice damage on the nipples and um, it's really important to get in touch with a breastfeeding counsellor and um, a less league leader um, or a lactation consultant so in the hospital you'll have access to the lactation consultants or then a private lactation consultant a lot of them are doing video calls at the moment so at any stage if you feel that something isn't doesn't feel right or you have any pain or you just would like to check in with someone, it's a great idea to, to chat to a, a breastfeeding counsellor. And then they will give you an indication as well if they feel that you need um, a bit more specialised help from a lactation consultant.